In this lecture, we will learn about C++ classes and object-oriented programming. And before that, just this presentation has been taken from MIT Open Courseware, okay, and the C++ lecture series. And it is taken under the Creative Common License, okay. So it's under the Creative Common License, okay. So now let's see what are classes. So before that, we will take one example, okay, and that of vector, okay. So there is a geometric vector and a vector has a one starting x1 and y1, okay, so and another point x2 and y2, okay. So this is the vector and you want to represent this vector in a C language, okay. So what you do? So in the context of geometry, a vector consists of two points and those points are the start point and the finish point, okay. And each point itself is a coordinate, okay? So each of these points has X and Y coordinate, okay? So let's see. So what happens here is, now this is the point. We have a starting point whose X coordinate is 0.4, the Y coordinate is 0.8, and similarly the end point has 0.9, 1.5. So what happened is, that now how will you represent it in C? So one way is you will say is that we will use four doubles, okay? So one will be the start X coordinate, the X coordinate of the first point, then the what Y coordinate of the first point, okay? So these two makes the first point and then end X and end Y are the x and y coordinates of the second point okay so we need to have four double points and a function okay so to pass it to so this is there so now let's try to see so we need four doubles okay that is there so now how will you define so we will say that okay we will have int main and we will see that in c we will have double x start double x end Okay, and then we will have double Y start and double Y end. So these are the four doubles that we will use for defining our vector. But let's try to see. Now if we want to print that vector, so what will you do? So we will have to print the starting point, the X coordinate and Y coordinate of the starting point and the X coordinate and Y coordinate of the end point. So here we use a print vector function and we pass all those four arguments. Then what happens is we have C out we do and you print like this. Okay, so this gives us a vector. So X coordinate and Y coordinate of the start and then you make an arrow of a vector then X coordinate Y coordinate of end. So how it seems? So we have now print vector if you do for this code piece of code. So what you will get is 1.2, 2.0 and arrow. So this is a vector. So this is how you would proceed in C. And it looks that these things. So what we see here is that we want to represent one vector. Okay. And for that vector, we need all these. Okay. So these all doubles are in fact very much related together okay because they all are representing one vector but in c there is no better way like here that okay you can represent them like this so in fact there is a thing called structure but we will see it so vector is there now let's try to examine the code so what happens is and let's say there is another thing that we want to add is that we want to have another operation and that is we want to have an offset. Okay, so offset we want to give to the x coordinate as well as the y coordinate. So how will you do that? So for that what you need to do is you need to pass the reference of all those four doubles as well as the offset for the X coordinate and offset for the Y coordinate. Then what you do, so X zero is X zero plus that offset 
x and y0 is y0 plus offset y okay so this is performing your work it works fine then you print the vector like we saw previously and now let's try to see so what happens now int main so we have offset vector so we make an offset of x offset of 1 and y offset of 1.5 now we print that vector for these points then we get something like this as the result okay so many variables being passed to the function so this is the point we want to make that many variables are being passed to the function for just operating on a simple vector okay so you need four uh, four of the doubles are needed to pass for a simple processing of just adding one offset okay so the function declaration becomes quite cumbersome so here comes the savior that is known as class a user defined data type which groups together related pieces of information a great definition okay a user defined data type which groups together the related pieces of information okay so let's try to see pictorial this is an excellent ppt provided by of course the mit the greatest institute in the world so vector so you have this as a class where we have the x coordinate start and then we have x coordinate end y coordinate start and y coordinate end okay so this is there so but all of them are kept in a box because this is your vector okay so x start your x start is here then you have your y start and then you are having another point which is x end and you have your y end okay so this is there and then what happens is that c++ guarantees that if we provide you a class where you can club them together so how we do that how is that clubbing being done in c very simple let's try to see this piece of code so work has very become easier for me with this pp2 so thanks to mit so class definition syntax so you have a class vector okay so you write the keyword here is class okay the name and then the class is there which tells that okay you are going to see one entity okay where everything are related informations are kept together bundled out together you have to define the name of that class so here it's vector so we write class vector then what we do we give an open brace telling them my class definition is starting then you end your class definition with a closed brace and then a semicolon to end now what happens inside that you see public double x start double x end double y start and double y end okay and before that you see a public modifier okay so let's not get involved in this public identifier but let's see that okay now all our x and y coordinates for the starting point and end point are clubbed together so that we have some ease in handling them okay so we don't need now to pass all those four are uh, doubles as argument to a function to process this vector okay so next so we see this indicates that new data type we are defining is called a vector okay now let's see so class vector so these are called the fields of that class okay so important again point to note these four things the doubles are known as fields okay so they are called fields so i don't need to draw much it's already given fields indicate what related pieces of information our data type consists of another name for field is members okay so they are members of that class okay so like a car okay so your car is made up of wheels bonnet your handle your gear and all so those are attributes or members of your class which is car so similarly your vector has these members okay in it so then let's move further okay so another very good diagram to explain fields can have different types of course okay when i'm describing so it's not necessary always that okay like a vector everything will be just say of same type like double we can have something different the great mit students okay so 
they have they will have name which is of type care okay an array of character and their student id will be int okay so now what this class explains is that it's not necessary that your members should have the same type they can have different types okay so name is of type care array and student id is integer so this is there now we come to another important point that is known as instance okay so let's tree see about instance an instance is an occurrence of a class okay so an instance is an occurrence of a class different instances can have their own set of values okay so this tells that okay there is a thing called class mit student okay it's a class now mit students there is not only one mit student there can be many mit students okay so what we want is that we want to differentiate that okay he is one mit student another one is another mit student and so on so those are called the occurrences of the class okay so what we do so they are also known as objects okay so like mit student 1 so mit student 1 mit student 2 mit student 3 and so on okay so if we want to represent different students so the class of students will be the same but inside that their name and their student id will be of course different so the object defines those different instances of that class here the mit different mit students so student 1 student 2 they are both mit students but how are they different they will have different names and different student ids okay so this is there and how you write the instances so we have defined a class here okay so if you see so here we have a class class mit student and then we have character star name which stores the name of the student and then end student id and then we also define those two students how so it is something similar like int we have the class type okay it is of integer type but we can have two variables int x and then int y so what we do the type we declare first then the instance name so similarly mit student that is the class name then your variable name the student 1 and student 2 okay so this is something like here if you see so student 1 student 2 so now we are just filling it student 1 is giza okay student id still unknown why is student name known because i have defined student 1 dot name is giza okay so another very important point so let's try to note this student dot name so if you want to access the field or the members how you do that so your variable here so it's similar to c structure if you have studied c so how you access the members using the variable name and then a dot operator okay so student1 dot name if i want to and then i say that okay it's equal to it so like an any variable its name is giza okay very bright student then you have if i want to write the student id so i will do student1 dot student id okay so student id so this will become equal to let's say roll number 1 the best student in mit so student id is 1 so this way you can say that now student id is also 1 okay but let's see what the professor there has done so he has done a very big roll number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 very good roll number okay so mit student has now because now he defined the mit student id so dot operator we are using as you should note here and then he gives the id but still in the name student 1 2 is defined but what happens is because you have not given any information in the code here in the main so these two attributes for student 2 even though student 2 is defined the memory is allocated for it but its name and student id are unknown okay so that's the problem so how we fix that 
again you can give those values here okay so we give the values here and this completes so that's jesse how you pronounce i think jesse and her roll number is 9876543321 okay so there is also in roll number also you have some kind of relation okay reverse so this is about the class basic about class okay and accessing fields so variable dot field name so you access like that so we will just see till here in this lecture so see out student name is student dot name we do like this so now we are printing out the name so student one dot name student one dot student id you print like this okay so that's there for the class the definition of class and how we use classes so i hope you understand this thanks a lot and i thanks mit also for providing such a wonderful ppt slide and giving us the option through the the license okay community commons license so thanks a lot